and brushing uh, for us is happening about three times a day now so certainly in the morning uh, with showers and then uh, most most of the days uh, sometime after a midday meal and then uh, in the evenings before we go to bed or before we go to sleep and so that's that's definitely happening in our house more regularly and is super important why is it so important uh, the big deal with the the cavity that I had was it was drilled and it was in between the two teeth and so they have to drill from the front and the back or, or inside and outside I guess would be a more accurate way of saying that and then they have to drill down through the top and then um, for those of you who don't know I, I didn't know this but the inside of your tooth or your teeth there's actual flesh or meat inside of it it's not like a hard uh, tooth all the way through and I didn't I didn't know that and so what happens when you get a really bad cavity is it actually goes through the hard layer of your tooth and then it starts rotting out the meat or the flesh that's on the inside of your tooth because of the bacteria and things that develop in there because you just can't get it clean once you have a hole or a, or a, a decay it's really hard to get it clean and so um, that's what happened with me and on this one tooth they did what's called a pulp cap where it's bleeding and it's kind of hemorrhaging inside the tooth because he's carved it out and he's gotten rid of all the decay and then he has to put some kind of sealer over it to stop the bleeding from happening and then fill the tooth which is uh, some kind of a composite material that fills the tooth and, and replaces the hardness of it but it puts the inside of the tooth in a pretty desperate situation because it's it's uh, damaged it's like cutting yourself or you know cutting the end of your finger off or something I mean that's what you've just done on the inside of your tooth and so naturally there's gonna be some pressure there because there's a lot of blood flow it's gonna be very sensitive to temperature which it was for me to the point of like like literally I have to stop doing what I'm doing and just like sit there for a few minutes because I it's so painful I can hardly even think and so uh, super important and, and one of the things that I found through this process was uh, you know the day of the operation it wasn't wasn't a big deal the next day it was it was pretty uncomfortable uh, the third day through probably the tenth day after it was very uncomfortable I mean and, and probably the last I would say the kind of the fifth day through the tenth day the big issue that I had I thought uh, like I thought I thought it had to do with like the amount of blood going into the tooth or or pressure from healing or things like that but one of the, the number one sensitive factor I found for you know when you get this uh, temperature sensitivity to your tooth was actually your body's blood temperature like for example when I would lay down in bed at night uh, the, the sheets are cold my whole body gets chilled my blood temperature goes down and that cold blood rushes to the tooth and it's just amazing pain for two or three minutes and then you know and then it subsides as my body warms up I thought that it had to do with you know blood rushing to my head or you know temperature sensitive sensitive you know putting something in your mouth it, it isn't actually so much the tooth itself that is temperature sensitive it's the blood flow or the blood supply to the tooth that you have to protect and make sure that it doesn't get chilled or there isn't big temperature shifts when you're going through uh, some kind of dental care or, or something like that so brushing flossing I mean we've all heard that we all know that um, but it took like some serious pain for it to become a huge priority for us and for me and uh, for my family and so I want to share that another thing that we learned about and started using these little Sonicare machines these are like I think they're like forty dollars or something like that and they're kind of cool. Uh, they have different little ends on them, so you can pop the ends off for, for whatever family member's using them. Um, and then uh, it has like a 30 second timer on it, so it vibrates uh, at, a, at a pretty high level and helps to clean the surface of your, of your teeth. And so, um, so they're very useful, and I would, would highly recommend uh, using that. We have found some great benefit to that it kind of feels when you're done it kind of feels like when after you get your your teeth cleaned at the dentist it feels really good a couple of other sort of unique out there things but totally work and like some of the biggest things that we learned through this process that we didn't know before one is oils uh, there's a there's a there's a recipe for a combination of three different oils 
that essentially kills bugs, uh, bacterial bugs, in your mouth. And the recommended time to use this mix is, you know, you just take a little bit of it and it, in the mixed bottle of the, with the three together, you dab it on your toothbrush and then you, you literally just brush your teeth with that oil on the toothbrush right before you go to bed. And this helps to clear your mouth of the bacteria that essentially could uh, in, invade and erode your, your, uh, your mouth while you're sleeping. And so the, the oils are, are uh, the, the scientists who developed it, it's a friend of mine uh, who just does this stuff all day long, it's the kind of thing he does, and he developed this for his family, which is quite large. Uh, he calls it uh, fire, and it's, it's, so it, 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 does, it does burn a little bit, like not super bad, just kind of like a spicy burn. And ironically enough, after a few days of using it, it stops doing that, and um, his understanding from it is, is that there's less bacteria in your mouth uh, when you do it more often, and the burning sensation actually comes from, uh, from the attack on the bacteria. So really quite interesting stuff. Uh, and I will um, I'll keep you posted through the blog about um, uh, ways to be able to get that oil in some kind of a mix, because it, it isn't sold over the counter. It's just something that you have to put together. So. Um, Keep your eyes open there for that. I'm happy to help share that. The last thing I want to talk about is um, it's called a laser. And this is really kind of interesting. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, all the living cells in your body, they vibrate at a certain frequency. And it's really, uh, it's really quite fascinating uh, what you can learn about your body through the vibrations of your different cells and different systems and things. It's quite quite interesting, really interesting. Uh, this is uh, called a laser, and it's called a natural laser, and I'll put the link here on the website for where I got this, but I think it was like $150 or $170 or something to buy it. But this, the way the laser is designed is it actually, uh, and I, I don't understand it scientifically, but it, what you can do with it is you can point it on certain parts of your body, and you can even do it through your cheek, into your gums or you can open up your mouth like this and you can shine it on your gums on like a problem area uh, or you can shine it on your hand or you can put it on the back of your neck if you got certain things or or in your ear or just yep if you have a cut you can put it on your cut and and what what the laser is designed to do this particular one is designed to reprogram the frequency at which your cells are vibrating like that sounds like a little weird to me uh, but it works, and it's scientifically proven, and it, from a mechanical, I mean, from a, you know, a mathematic standpoint, I mean, it's a living cell, it's, it's got a frequency, this has got a frequency, this helps recalibrate uh, your body cells to a certain frequency, pretty cool. If it helps, if it's, if it helps 10%, and, you know, the, the fire oil helps 10%, and, and using a, a good quality, uh, you know, mechanical toothbrush helps 10% and, and brushing and flossing and, and being regular about our oil, oral towel helps. You know, I think that's really great. So I'll, I'll provide a link for this on the blog there so that you can read it. Um, and then I guess the final comment that I would make uh, before we wrap this up would be just having to do with diet choices. Uh, obviously, I'm a big uh, fan of eating healthy and eating lots of produce in uh, raw, organic, fresh form. And so obviously that's going to be very helpful as well when you look at your diet. Uh, try, to, try to eat the majority of your food up front in the day. So between breakfast and, uh, and lunch should be the you know, 80-90% of your intake. And then, and then from basically from 2 or 3 o'clock on, uh, you should have very little intake. Our family doesn't really eat dinner. We just sometimes we'll have little snacks and stuff in the afternoon and the evening. But most generally we don't do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, dinner meals and, and especially before you go to bed you don't want to drink a bunch of sugary stuff or, or eat some dried fruit or raisins or or different things that are going to be real heavy on your on your mouth that are going to uh, you know clog it up and, and give the bacteria some food to feed on so that's my uh, analysis of what we can do better for oral care and uh, I think my dentist would approve so I uh, hope you do too and I hope it's helpful